everyone, and welcome back to another Who's Stuff podcast. This is number uh, uh, 10-ish or something like that. Can someone else do it? No, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it. And today oh, we're... Oh, you want. No, 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 I've got to go it, I've got to go it. Oh, you do it. Yeah, Seb, okay. stay, on, stay on mute. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Please, 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 please. Okay, go on. No. One more try, one more try. Shut up, no. One more try, one more try, one more try. One more try. Just so you know Seb's drunk, so... No, 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 no. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Who Stuff podcast and today we're going to be discussing some of our favourites and our least favourite Base Under Siege episodes from all of the 57 uh, uh, years of, of, of Doctor Who. So I am going to go first, I've got a little bit of paper somewhere in this room that is really here we go. Ah, now the way we're going to be doing this is we're going to be taking turns discussing our three favourites and then one of our least favourites. So, obviously I have to go back to 1967 or 8 or something like that with The Web of Fear, which is one of my all-time favourites. To be honest, I've rewatched this one recently and it is incredible, really. Um... Patrick Charlton is on top form. This is obviously the first time we see uh, the Brigadier in units. But thanks to a certain man named Philip Morris, we do not have um, part three, although this is going to be animated very soon. And it's just a brilliant story. It's the horror of fan rock. Now, anyone who knows me knows that this is one of my favourites of all time. Um, I don't even know what to say about this one because it's just that good. Um, it's probably the most based under siege story you can get in Doctor Who because it all takes place in one amazing lighthouse. Uh, Leela, she's great in it. and She's one of my favourite companions. Tom Baker's in top form. All the cast are great and it's quite dark physically and metaphorically as well. The Rutans are in it who obviously battle the Sontarans, I think, in some some form or another. Um, but yeah, very good story and one that I definitely think you should all get. And the final one of my favourites, we're going to New Who now. We're going to the 2009 specials for the brilliant Waters of Mars. Um, I never used to be able to watch this episode when I was very little, just because I think I watched the first two minutes and got absolutely terrified. Okay, starting with my first story, I have gone with The Tomb of the Cybermen, which is, honestly, I'd argue saying that it's Troughton's best story. It's a perfect use of base on the siege. It's got the perfect concept. It's got the Cybermen, again, f fantastic in this, especially with the scene at the end of part two with them breaking out of the tomb it's a great shot but just it's just it's just enjoyable all four parts of it very good now after that we're skipping forward to new who with um probably my favorite from series one i'd probably say is dalek now this is probably top three stories of all time for me it's just it's fantastic the uh, base in the siege element's good but just the inner story itself with the ninth doctor and his northern ptsd of the time war is done perfectly and christopher eccleston gives off one of his best performances in the show in that and my final third story i've had to do a quick on the spot change because originally it was waters of mars but now that seb said that i've gone with ood two-parter from series two mm. It's just good. Probably the best from the series, too, I'd say. And now I'm handing it over to Ollie, I think. Yeah, my first one is a uh, classic who won one of the few classic based on the sieges I've seen. The Magnetera, I watched this a few months ago and I really enjoyed it. And there's quite a few 
Troughton based on the siege stories and um yeah I think this is the only one I've seen so I'm looking forward to watching the rest if this is anything to go by because I really did enjoy it Ben is a bit annoying in it uh, yeah the side characters are quite good I can't remember the name of the guy that's with the doctor in part two I think when they first it's a cliffhanger where they see the macro i think i was going to say dalek for my next one but uh max just said it and i can't really think of another one now so um f- thanks a lot so um yeah if it's all right if you come back to me uh now my next one is a 12th doctor story mummy on the errant express i really like this one it's quite fun and I actually quite like Clara in this one. And uh, Capaldi is just great. And what's his face? Perkins, I think. TF, I think it's you next. Oh, it's me. It's finishing my big choice. Then. My first story is um, Fury from the Deep. It's an obvious choice for me. It's probably not a surprise to most people. Uh, I really like this one. It was one of the only missing stories that I listened to the surviving audio of and absolutely just watched the surviving clips over and over again. Um, I have to say that now that it's been animated, it does take some of the fear factor out of it naturally because animation always does that, always makes things look a little bit cartoony, but it's still really good. My next one, another um, second Doctor one, The Seeds of Death, I could not put this one on my list. Uh, I really like it. It's the idea behind this one that I like, uh, Team At. Uh, and uh, this idea of transporting humans and resources and all sorts from Earth to the moon. Perhaps it was a little bit more exciting back in 1969 than it is today, but uh, really good. I'm going to say uh, Under the Lake and Before the Flood because uh, I could not do this video without mentioning my favourite doctor. And yes, Mummy on the Orient Express is really good. And I don't mind um, Sleep No More too. Uh, this is just a two-parter that I really enjoy. I think... Well, one of my favourite New Who two parters, actually. Three really good stories that were really hard to pick. Could have chosen loads, but yeah, they're my three. Okay, so the joys of going last. All three of mine have been said, which is just absolutely fantastic. Um, so I'll just tell you what three they were. And I'm currently scrolling back to the Base Under Siege stories list. And I'll probably say a couple more just looking at the list that hasn't been said yet because... There's definitely some others that are that are really good as well. But yeah, the ones I was originally going to say um, were The Seeds of Death, which TF said, but it is absolutely amazing. I, I love it. I never used to like it quite as much, but after a rewatch, it is so good. Um, it's better than The Ice Warriors. I do think The Ice Warriors is underrated as well, so I'll give a little... I'll give a little mention to that, I suppose, because I do love The Ice Warriors, but The Seeds of Death is just absolutely top tier Doctor Who, I mean, I love the way it's done, it's so exciting and it's just fully enjoyable. Uh, then I was going to do um, the uh, Impossible Planet and Satan Pit Ud Ut- two-parter, um, which I can't remember who, but someone already said that, but it is just absolutely amazing. And another one TF Productions stole is Under the Lake and Before the Flood, which um, I still have to talk about because it is my favourite Capaldi episode, one of my favourite episodes uh, well, one of my favourite stories ever. Um, 10 out of 10. I recently rewatched it and it's easily Capaldi's best story, in my opinion. It's just phenomenal Doctor Who. I love the the, the um, time travel aspect of it. It's so cool. I mean, it's mainly part one that's really a base under siege, but it's just so good. Um, I'm looking at the list right now. Other mentions for ones that haven't already been said. The Tenth Planet is amazing. Um... Uh, the Ark in Space I love uh, uh, fa- how is Father's Day based on Siege I suppose it is but I mean yeah that's great but yeah most of mine have been said but there you go oh, hold on I, I thought of my third one because okay. yeah mine was taken um, yeah I, I looked at the list and you just said I had the exact same thought how is Father's Day a base under siege but yeah if it counts that one Eccleston's great I love <clears throat> I love how um, they're all sort of trapped in the church and then the Reaper takes the Doctor and then Rose is just left and has to try and figure out 
what have it, although it's kind of Pete that figures it out. But yeah, it, it's just a great story. So now we're going to be talking about our least favourite base under siege story. And I didn't even have to write this one down because if I wrote it down, I think I might be sick. Um, just even thinking about it, I'm feeling queasy, so excuse me. But um, it's obviously the worst, one of the worst. It, oh, it's probably it's the a worst. story, mate. Uh, yes, okay, sorry. It's the Saranga conundrum. Um, it's like a little child just just, just vomited all over a bit of paper and, what's his name, Chris Chibnall was like, yeah, this would be a great story, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's all absolutely atrocious. I just remember this man being pregnant and these uh, the, the Ryan and Graham just sort of doing, what were, they, what were they even in the episode? I've chosen a story that I, I bet no one's probably expecting me to say this, but I, I, I went from Cold War the uh, Matt Smith one wait, from wait, series wait, what? seven eight. What? I've never what? Been a- Cold War is very, very good. Don't you dare slander Cold it. War is a fantastic story. It's one of the best from that series. What are you on about? I think I watched Cold War. If by fantastic you mean fantastically wank, then I agree. No, I, I'm with Max on that when it's terrible. I don't like it. What? Cold War is... Is it's, it's like a nine out of ten story. I, Ollie, Ollie, just go for it. Ollie, I can't hear. I can't okay. hear Cold War right. slander. No way. The, the flesh two parter. It, it's awful. Every time I watch it, it just gives me a migraine. I relate to that person with the weird head thing because yes, it's probably as painful as that. I cannot remember a thing about the story, and the only thing it gets right are the cliffhangers. The rest is just abysmal. And how this was ever put to screen, I never know. Without mentioning uh, anything that's been mentioned so far, which I wholeheartedly agree with, including Cold War, it's not good, it's terrible, I don't like it. Uh, I'm going to say The Curse of the Black Spot. To be fair, most of the stuff from Series 6 you could put on a bad episodes list. It's a diabolical season, but... Curse of Black Spot. Uh, it's the second best New Who series. Yeah, hold back, hold back, hold back. It's the second best New Who series. I agree about the flesh parter. I somewhat agree about the Curse of the Black Spot. They're the only two bad stories from the season, though. Okay? Name name another bad episode from that series. Go, please. Uh, Wedding of River Song. Perhaps. 10 out of 10. <laughs> you dizzy. I'm drunk as well. Curse of Black Spot, I don't remember much about this one. I can just remember this like ghost woman who looks like something taken out of a Disney film in Siam or something, and they're in some weird hospital thing and they're all scared about some black spot that they put on their palm. I'm going to go back to Classic Who because I think I've, I've had enough Matt Smith story slander. Uh, I agree about the flesh two-parter. I somewhat agree about Curse of the Black Spot. It's not amazing. It's the, the other weak one from the series. Cold War is fantastic, though. Um, but, yeah... I knew that the flesh two parter would be a would be an obvious choice, so I went with something a bit different. Um, now, if you if you know me, then you'll know how much I hate this story, Warriors of the Deep. Uh, this story, just even thinking about it, just angers me. Um, I mean, if just watching it, it's not the worst Doctor Who story ever. But if you think about the fact, it's the Silurians and the Sea Devils. Now. Two incredible villains, and the the two stories as well, Doctor Who and the Silurians and the Sea Devils, are two of my favourite Doctor Who stories, and they're two of my favourite Doctor Who villains. Um, Doctor Who and the Silurians is amazing, such a great concept, and then the Sea Devils, um, you know, has a different sort of variation of the villain. It's equally as great. The Master is amazing. And it's such a great story, and I love those two classic villains. Then they bring them back in Warriors of the Deep and they ruin them. Not just the design, I'm not talking about the design. They, they, surely you're going to bring these two villains back for a great story. Not the most average little plot run around a little base thing. Nothing happens. There's literally no plot or anything to it. There's these dumb characters, just people just running around, the bloody murka. Um, it just, it's absolute awful it's it's just an abomination to doctor who i can't even i've watched it once i'm never watching it again i struggled i i contemplated turning it off at the end of part two i struggled to even get through it it's an absolute mess of ah it's not that bad it's a bit over it's bad but yeah 
Yeah, I, I don't think it's as bad as, pe- as people say it is because it, yeah, it's been like over a year since I last watched it. But I, I enjoyed it when I watched it. it How is it enjoyable in any sense of the word? It's very good. It's very good. It's whether very... you watch Seb, for you're drunk. You look Seb, you can't say anything. Like you're drunk. Twenty pound production. Shut up, you're good. Scottish. Thanks everyone for watching. We missed out on the love and monsters to eat along for this. <laughs> I hope you all enjoy. It. Goodbye. This was the most awful recording of. Ever to yeah. happen. We had slander of Cold War. We had Seb being that drunk. This is the video that ends you stuff. We will all go our separate ways after this. I stopped recording that. The only, only thing, the only, the only thing that made this recording enjoyable was TF Productions saying with his own voice uh, when he started, um, "Oh, it's me. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> finishing eating my my Victoria sponge. Legendary. Oh, it's lovely stuff. I love it."